right, yeah, that detox boy, god damn. Boy. <laughs> All right, what's up? What's up? Q and A. What y'all think? How you show up in your culture and your community? Um, I think where you were trying to go with that video is to show that this guy is not gonna be any different on that interview than what he would be in his community or his culture. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he does a lot in his community. Yeah. And, and I'll say said, correct to a degree, not to cut you off, but he, that motherfucker's very intelligent. Oh, yeah, he's mad smart. Like, and, he spends his time in a, in a lot of political halls and a lot of town halls and like really discussing a lot of community stuff. But yeah, it's very interesting. It's, it's a caricature that he does, but the motherfucker's intelligent. Yeah. But, That's why he's able to trigger people the way he does. Well, yeah, but I don't think that we should discount the fact that he's intelligent because he was talking however he was talking in the interview. But that ain't got shit to do with him being intelligent or yeah. not, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but as far as you know, him speaking very freely and sounding like a, a black man in his speak or in his speech and the way that he was um uh, articulating himself, I think that you're we're, we're all gonna naturally be that way in our culture i know i am in my community like when i'm around my people i talk like i'm around my people if i'm in a as we were saying earlier professional setting and i have to be concerned with the environment that i'm in at that time um keeping in mind everybody may not understand you know what i'm saying it's like if you're if you speak a different language, right? You don't, when you're speaking to somebody, I should say, who speaks a different language, you're probably gonna slow down your speech or over enunciate if you're considerate of that. Or you can choose to speak the way that you speak a bunch of people and completely lose the person. So I think it's a, more about self, like awareness as it is um, anything else. Like, I don't think that that's necessarily code switching. Well. Um, in so, a negative, in a negative light. Yeah. Well, so I think the, the 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 point of the video is he was addressing our community, mm -hmm. and he was speaking down upon some stuff that people normally don't speak speak down upon, like a Mike Brown situation, Trayvon Martin, things of that nature, right? Speaking about <clears throat> Black Lives Matter, right? Mm -hmm. Who overwhelmingly, from the results, haven't hasn't done much for us in terms of the organization. So he was speaking out against these things and he actually in real life does does something about it. Right. But he was addressed okay. in our community how it's some shit. So now we're saying you see what he did and you see he puts I'm telling you he puts action to it based on what I know. How do you show up in your culture? How do you show so you're up saying that there should be less people like uh how people are viewing Deion Sanders right now or how maybe some people view Shannon Sharp and more people like a Dr. Umar. No, I, I no, I don't follow Dr. Umar, <laughs> so no. But in terms of people actually make trying to make an impact, like his school that's mm -hmm. supposed to be in Delaware, I'm gonna ride by there and see if it's really a building. <laughs> so but, you're saying that's don't what, talk about that's it, what be about said, it. Is that but that's, kinda... but that's what he said recently um, in an interview. So I'm just going off of that. That they actually did raise a sufficient amount of funds that were not. Um, inclusive of anyone who was Caucasian and the school is up. So he's somebody who not only talked the talk, but put the shit into action. That the, bu the, building, the buildings were already there. He also did have to use white contractors, right? And he needed discounts for everything. So I don't know if he got any money from the cash app from white people. I don't know how he would control that, but he did use white contractors at the end of the day. Hey, I, I mean, at the end of the day, I can't knock him necessarily. I don't want to be stuck on him, but it is somebody to me who has <clears throat> said stuff with regards mm -hmm. to the community mm -hmm. and then who you've seen evidence of him being involved within the community doing certain things. So yeah. to that point, that that's all I'm trying to say is people feel like uh, Dion switched up. You know, oh, he started mm -hmm. off with Jackson and then he went over to this other college and he left the niggas behind and you know cold switched as you want to say whatever um so it sounds like what you're, you're what the implication is is that there should be less people doing the code switching 
because it is offensive to our culture and more people that are like Miss Major said, walking the walk and talking the talk. I, I'm not really talking about code switching though right now. I'm just talking about um like for instance, you damn I should have capitalized that bitch. Why OU is talking about the niggas on the screen. Mm-hmm. So how do you show up in your community? How do you show up in your culture? So me, I've fallen off a little bit because of all these kids. But okay. with a hundred black men of America, I coach high school football. I woke a lot of people up to the truth, right? I used to have a lot more conversations, um, you know, so on and so forth. So, like, pouring into it, you know what I mean? Because we talking about Umar, we talking about Dion, right? What the mm-hmm. fuck are we doing? And I just wanted to show you Charleston White, who talked that shit, put, call niggas out, and then be outside. So you're asking what we specifically do. I mean, it's fine to give a general answer, but, you know, you got to, we got to, come on, we got to connect with I'm, the I'm a, So I'm going to speak for me, though. I think okay. I show up in my culture, in my community as Shanae. Shanae is very multifaceted. So um, a lot of y'all know that I, I'm elected. I do planning zoning. I go up there with my black girls, rock, earrings. I don't care. And I wear my hat. This is how I wore my, this is what I wore today. And I will speak. Yes, I'm going to, I have a New York accent. I, I don't try to fix my <laughs> accent to accommodate them. I'm going to read it with my accent. I say New York. Bon, bon. I say New York. I say New York. That is how I, oh, and I'm the secretary, which means right, I read man. things into the agenda. So I'm my authentic self. You elected me knowing it's how I am. You want to see me on Facebook tomorrow, some eh, turn it up. That's how I am. I'm not going to be any different. I've been at political events and I'm still, I'll have a glass of wine. I might have a beer. I'm going to be the same way. I think for me and my community, I'm going to be authentic because how I am in real life is how I'm going to portray on social media. I'm very transparent. And my what's been my, my whole thing I've been saying this whole podcast that I've been on, at least, at least you honest. I'm going to be honest with myself and be transparent. That's how I show up in the community. That's cool. Alex, you about to say something? No, I, I think I'm just thinking about the question and wondering how I'd be perceived by the culture and the communities, particularly the ones that I'm surrounded by and the ones that I work with. Because um, we can all have these perceptions of ourselves and like, this is what we give, this is what I do. But I think something that I think about myself is as a Black woman, um, as someone who is in the nonprofit spectrum and all these other things, how am I perceived in my culture and in my community? I know for me, I try to make sure that I'm always, um, <clears throat> when it comes to the medical field and my personal experience with my mother, who all my life, you know, she's been in and out of the hospital, been sick. I always like to show up as an advocate. That's for me, right? So I want to be an advocate in the workspace, out of the workspace when I'm doing my youth work, um, when I'm dealing with patients, when I'm trying to get people on. The first thing I let them know is, you know, this organization, we're black and brown here. But my number one priority is our black patients. That's that's just me personally. But I am curious to know how we how we think we're perceived in the community. I know I'm perceived as an educated black woman. <laughs> that's a good question. That's a good question. Adrian, how are you perceived in the community? I don't know, yo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think wow. you know, not nah, yeah. seriously. So this is that's a good question, right? When I first graduated, it was like people thought, oh, black man masters, you got to work with boys. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I automatically got pushed to kind of work with young black men. Right. And I got tired of it, honestly, after a while. And I preferred to work with men like already grown and couples because when I worked, when I tried to work with the um, like teenage boys, adolescents, boys, their moms never wanted to do nothing, right? And they like, huh, fix my child. Like, you got to fix them. And my thing is like, no, nigga, it's you. You as the parent, like, you're the problem. You know what I'm saying? And so that's when I, um, I'm i like, nah, I'm doing couples and men, couples and men. But lately, I, I've been getting a lot of boys. And so I'm like, uh, January, I think I might got to reswitch my focus because it is a need. Like it is a need and they really like benefit from me rocking with them. So, and, and it's like, you know how we grew up here. It's, it's, it's always fellas, you know what I'm saying? So even being around them, like I miss that because like him, every, everybody up North, everybody in Connecticut, New York, DC. So it's like, that's still filling a void for me too, especially all these damn daughters I got. And then, uh, <laughs> and I also coach, I coach three and four year olds too. So I think I show up as a responsible 
black man who handles all of his responsibilities always always could, could you do could you do more yes or no nope Oh <laughs> shit like that shit like that shit like all that kids, I'm like, all these kids i got nope they gonna get they gonna get what they get that's it you, you i just want to say adrian you see the way you were speaking about it you you said it so passionately that's how you're showing up you're showing up as somebody that is passionate about what you do and you care but you're yourself like even how you were speaking yeah. you probably speak to them like that too that's what i'm saying i'm the same way i'm not gonna switch yeah, and they need it too. Like I said, I think before I wasn't in a position to really see it, it was just because it just got pushed on me like I was expected to, you know, do it. But now that I've been in the field for like 10 plus years, it's like, nah, like it's, it's literally a need. And when I sit and talk and the things they open up to me about, that joint be crazy. So it's like, yeah, I, I got to stop running from it. So I think I'm going to switch gears and kind of go back to the teenage boys, man. You are sure. relatable. That's what makes you who you are. That's, that's, that's how you are for parents, parents, yo. But that's another yeah. thing. So I'm gonna be checking a lot of these single moms too, yo. Like yeah. <laughs> the kid goes, but like, you gonna have to if you're not willing to do this and da, 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 should, it's only yeah. gonna be so much I could do. You should so no point. B, how you show up in the community? Well, so one of the things that I do in my community is I help the elderly. I live next to two elderly people. Um one lady, the lady to my left. Um, I'm always doing something for her 24-7, 365, whether it's taking her to the, her doctor's appointments, changing light bulbs, changing the cameras, um, doing grocery shopping for her. Actually, I got to take her to the doctor tomorrow. Um, I'm always doing something for her. Um, the lady to the right of me, I do a lot of the grocery shopping for her. Um, Hamp, as you know, where I live on my block, it's mainly a bunch of elderly people. So um, I don't have that exposure to a lot of the youth. Um, now you also know where I live at. I walk past McDonald's and there's, I'm not going to say a lot, but there are some homeless people. Sometimes I buy them a meal. Sometimes they'll ask me for a meal. I buy them a sandwich, whatever, whatever. Um, also every second or third Saturday, whatever Saturday this is, if it's to y'all all right. No, they laughing at me about that potato salad. That's why we laughing. Oh, but, yeah, you could have brought that lady potato that's salad. That's a different you. story for a different day. You you're mm. right, but you brought it up. So but anyway, um <laughs> every second Saturday of the month, um, I feed the homeless at McFish <laughs> Square. So I feel like I give back to the community a lot. Um so to answer your next question, do I think I give back more? Hell no. No, I no, I ain't waking up no more early Saturday mornings. This labor, this neighbor to the left of me, she running me crazy. The neighbor to the right, she about to run me crazy. This all I got. Um, so yeah. So, so keep giving, B. So let me get so and I just want to know. So the two elderly people next door, a couple uh cheeseburgers, yeah, and then the the every third Saturday a month. We saying that's all we got. If if it is, that's fine. But I mean, that's could, all we well, got. and also based on what I do outside of that, if I were to do more, my time would be extremely limited. I mean, but I feel like what I do, yeah, it's, it's more than enough. Yeah, I feel like you show up in the who, who said it's more than enough though. Huh? I said you show up in your community by giving your time. Yeah, your absolutely. Community. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so. I, all right, well, let's let's keep going around before I ask some more 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 pointed questions. Mary, <laughs> this shit about to be shaky, man. Go ahead. What? <laughs> Why is it about to be shaky? Go ahead. What you do? Which how you show up in the community, man? Raising decent children. What? <laughs> <laughs> Your own children or like the village children? <laughs> My own children. <laughs> My own children. That's all I got. That's all I got for y'all. Like making sure that my kids make it out this world, boy, and they do the right thing. You know, maybe they could give more to the community, but just making sure that I'm raising them right. I feel like right now that's the best thing I can do for the community. So basically it's home and work and that's it. That's a lot though. I know. I'm just my, my husband owns a business. Your community. I do a lot, but I don't feel like I feel like it's for the general population. I wouldn't say my community, but um, yeah. But you're raising children that will be um citizens in this community and doing yes. things. So yes, yes. they would. Yes. They would make a change in the world that I couldn't. 
Man, yeah, I guess I'm in that same boat. Like, I don't do a fucking thing for my community if I have to <laughs> really think about it. You make everybody laugh, but you just said it. Everybody. I'm so fed up with this motherfucking just, community, boy. Yeah, it's not limited to that community. I can't really think of anything that I do for my community or my culture mm. or the culture, I guess I should say. Damn. Okay. Uh, Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Asia. So um, for my communities, I, I navigate different communities, but for my communities, um, I show, why are you laughing? I I I'm trying to think who you, we ain't talking about everybody else that you like. No, 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 no. I'm talking about as a, as a black woman. Yeah, the people that belong to you. But, yeah. And as a black businesswoman, Yes. Okay. I, I show up and I, two different things as a black woman. I, I talk to black women about being their authentic, their authentic selves, being mm -hmm. the best version of themselves. And I model that. I talk to them about that because a lot of times black women, especially that may have come along the same <clears throat> road that I have journey I have, there's a lot of toxicity within them. And so I talk to them about um, being free of that toxicity and being the best version of yourself. The other part of it is, is the business world and business women, black business women because you want to have and provide this service and or product. How do you do that? How do you navigate the business world? How do you navigate entrepreneurism, um, entrepreneurial um, world? How do you navigate um, the government space and selling your products, selling your services? So I, I talk because I've been through it and I give of myself and my knowledge to them and lend my services and, and my wealth of knowledge to them. Okay. Alex. Oh, I did mine already. Remember? Oh, you did yours. Yeah, my yeah, bad. Sir. I didn't do his, but he don't Eddie. get that. Eddie. Yeah, I was trying to allow Asia to say her aggressive sentence. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, I, I've shown up in my community in different ways. Um, spent 12 years. Um, three years of special needs class working with kids who on different spectrums, um, volunteering often before I started um, and I established my LLC, I did a lot of events cooking wise that were for free. Um, so just having different conversations and setting up spaces where people can network, enjoy good food, drinks, um, what have you. And, you know, I've, I've noticed people have gotten jobs connecting with other people, people have gotten together. <laughs> you know, relationships and whatnot. Um, outside of that, just mentorship. And um, I've coached a couple of basketball teams when I was working in school. So there's always a space where I feel that as a black man, if I'm amongst young black men, young black women, um, I just do my due diligence to drop some sort of a dime on their heart, on their mind, um, to leave them thinking about, you know, what it is that they want to do with their futures or tell them some real shit. If anything, how I show up by my community, it's some real ass shit, right? Like, I think <laughs> what I present here on this podcast ain't too far off from where I am in the real world, right? So, like, I'll call a cracker a cracker if I need to. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of that cold switch and stuff, unfortunately, is wired into us. Um, I find myself kind of <clears throat> lightening up the mood, pending you know, how much whiteness is in the room, but I stop. I'm literally actively, consciously trying to stop doing that shit and just being myself no matter what. And even when I do somewhat lighten it up, these crackers are still intimidated, which is just like, I can't help but be big and black. Like, that is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So I'm showing up with my hundred plus thousand dollar education. You know, I suit up when I want to. And otherwise, it was like, you know, when, when you show up, it is what it is, man. Like, also, get it Shit like that. Shit like that. Shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.